Today I want to talk about change. Um, I, I want you to remember back before you were saved, before you were introduced to Jesus. Remember what life was like then? I, I don't know if you do or not because some of you guys may have just grown up in church and you've been basically following Jesus your whole life. But for those of you that may not have got saved till later in life or you can remember pre born again, pre-salvation, and you remember that time in your life, hopefully when you got saved, it put you on a new, different, a changed path, if you will. Now, Scripture says, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things passed away, behold, all things become new, new. Well, I, I pray that has happened for you. But for all of us that are here this morning, the reason why we continue to learn, we continue to read the Word, we continue to come to church is hopefully and prayerfully not just out of obligation, but it's because you're still believing God for new in your life. Anybody make any New Year's resolutions? You don't have to raise your hand. It's a question that you can put in your mind and go, yeah, I made one. But as you look back and you remember when you started walking with Jesus, you made a resolution. You started on a new adventure. You started in change. January 1st each year is always a significant mark in time for us to start over. Maybe it's our eating. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, just some changes that you made. Maybe it's, I'm going to be in church on not just Sundays, but Wednesdays. Uh, Jill put something on social media about starting your year right. And I believe it's the right thing to go to church. I mean, the Bible says it, so uh, I think it's a good thing in encouraging people to start off right in church. Maybe you're starting a new Bible study. Maybe it's you're, you're going you're, you're gonna to curtail your spending habits, and we're going to get into a different way of budgeting. Um, maybe it's I'm getting rid of some of the things in my closet that I keep thinking I'm going to fit into. I, I don't know what it is, but... Out with the old, in with the new. I mean, that's kind of where we're at this year. And I, I, I know that, that today you were probably coming to church going, well, he's going to talk about that. And you know, you were right. That's what I'm talking about. I do pray that in the process that has been started, that you'll figure out a way to watch over it to completion. And I pray that as I give the word today, it'll give you some avenues for change to help you. If it's a God change. And I pray that it won't be another failed attempt. I say this all the time. Every year we, we probably have this idea that we're going to read through the Bible. And most of us has read at least the first chapter of Genesis. I, I find that preachers preach mostly from the first chapter of Genesis. I don't think preachers are exempt from having, okay, I started there and then I got excited about something else. And I, I just think that in life a lot of times we have this intention to change, but we start looking at the process and we go, this is tough. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, Romans 2, a lot of different places in Scripture. It talks about change and it uses a word that I'm going to give you that's a biblical word. I wanted to give the word change because that makes the most sense. But the Bible uses the word transformed. From this to this. Now, what does that mean? What does that look like? How does God do that? What's our part in this process? I want to give you today, today's a three-point sermon, three foundational things, truths, that every Christian needs to be established in. They need to be established in these areas and understand that in order to cooperate with God's transformation in our lives, that these will work, but you have to have these three areas of your life established. And so right off the bat, I want to give them to you. Let me tell you before I give them, though, Christianity. Christianity is not behavior modification. Just trying in and of yourself to be a better person, you'll lose. It's not behavior modification. It's a trust in God to empower you through this new creation process that continues not just immediately after salvation, but every day of the Christian life. We are being transformed. We were transformed and we will be transformed. We, let me say this again. 
We were transformed, we are being transformed, and we will be transformed. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Hopefully I can get into some of this today. Many struggle with change because they just don't get the process. Christianity, everything starts on the inside and works its way out. World thinking, everything outside's trying to get in. Now, now think on that for a second. God's not trying to get in your life from the outside. He's trying to get out of your life into the world to make a difference. Now, that may hit you wrong, but I, I want to explain some of this today. Three foundational truths. Number one, you have to experience the new birth. Supernatural. God changes your heart. God changes your life. He changes your destination. There's a new birth. That's number one. Number two, and I'm giving them all right off the beginning. In case you do fall asleep, you can kind of expand on these yourself. But number two, offer your bodies a living sacrifice daily to the Lord. A lot of people have an intention to do that right off the bat. Offering your bodies a living sacrifice daily to the Lord. Number three, renewing your mind. These are three biblical principles that you have to have enacted in you for you to truly experience change or transformation. Now, John chapter 3, let's talk about the new birth. John chapter 3, verse 1. I've given you the three, let's talk about them. There was a man named Nicodemus. Chapter 3 of John, verse 1, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. That's who Nicodemus was. After dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, boy, Nicodemus, you're smart. You're right. No, he, here's what he said. I'm going to tell you the truth. Unless you're born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. You can't. You can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born. This Pharisee came to Jesus at night. Nicodemus came to him at night. I want you to know he came to him at night, and that wasn't an accident. If he had come to Jesus during the daytime and got caught, daylight things are seen easier. You know, in the light things are seen easier. He went in the dark because if he'd have been seen during daylight hours talking to Jesus, he'd have probably been kicked out of the synagogue, persecuted, ridiculed. He wouldn't have been treated real well by his peers. I want you to know God doesn't want us sneaking around trying to serve God at night. He wants you doing it during the day. Now, I'm not just, I'm speaking symbolically. I, he wants you doing this in all parts of your life, not just in the hidden. Well, get away in your prayer closet. I agree with that, but don't leave your prayer closet the only place you pray. See, there's, there's got to be a place where we understand that God wants us to be bold in our faith. And there's nothing wrong with standing in line at Walmart praying for somebody. Well, I just couldn't do that. They, people be, get offended. They offended all the time anyway. Nicodemus butters him up. Hey, hey, Jesus, we all know you're from God. We've seen it by all the things. It's evident. We've seen it all. And Jesus didn't say, boy, you got it, buddy. That's me. He didn't operate in pride. He just cuts to the chase and deals with the issue and says, unless you are born again, and he deals with the issue, there's no kingdom of God for you. We've spent all 2022 talking about the kingdom of God. And unless you're born again, kingdom of God stuff is not your option. Now, everything starts with being born again. Let's just keep reading here in John chapter 3, verse 4. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus here is speaking in the spiritual. Nicodemus is trying to speak in the physical. And that's kind of where we are a lot. We address everything from a physical means when we forget that we're spiritual beings. Nicodemus, we just are just like him. We miss so much because we're only looking at things from a physical standpoint. Now, John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus says, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Boy, Jesus just spells it out for him. So don't be surprised 
when I say you got to be born again. Don't be wowed. Don't be, oh my goodness. Don't be so amazed that I'm telling you because what I'm saying is you're only talking about this from a physical nature. And what I'm telling you is there's a spiritual side to this. And the spiritual side, you've got to understand how to operate in. Don't be surprised when I tell you you got to be born again. It's not that difficult. I'm talking about a spiritual matter. Don't be wowed by what I just said. You've got to understand that you've got to be born physically, and then you've got to be a born again spiritually. Now, everybody kind of says, well, I already know that. This new birth is for only those that were born. This new birth is only for those that were born. Angels don't get born again. You've got to be born of water, and then you've got to have a second birth spiritually. Now, I understand I'm, I'm right now prayerfully preaching and talking to a bunch of people who have made Jesus Lord spiritually and allows them the opportunity in life to not live according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit. Romans 8 talks all about that. You can live according to whichever birth you want to acknowledge. And here's the sad part. A lot of God's people who have accepted him as Lord and Savior are always living according to the physical, and they don't acknowledge a life according to the spiritual. A lot of people get there. You're going to live according to the flesh, you're going to live according to the spirit. And as God's followers, Jesus has said it exactly what we're supposed to do. And we have to establish that when we're saved. You establish Jesus as Lord of your life. And sometimes we do that to get a ticket to heaven. And then we walk right out of that salvation experience. And we keep living according to the physical. It's a battle now. It's a battle. It's not natural to get born again. It's supernatural. And all of us understand that, and then we don't recognize any other part of life in the supernatural. We do for salvation, and then we forget it after that. Your body isn't born over. It's not born over. Your body, your mind isn't born over. Your spirit is. It's a spiritual thing. Now, let's talk about this, because this is important. We've got to establish that when you get saved... It's spiritual, your spirit being. You are three part beings body, soul, spirit. Your spirit gets born again. Your body isn't born again. You didn't crawl back into the womb. That's gross. You didn't, that wasn't, he's not talking about another physical birth. Your body isn't born again. Your soul, Mind, will, emotions, intellect, feelings, that's not born anew. It's your spirit that gets born again. This may just be some real revelation for people today. And you may say, I've heard this a hundred times, we'll keep hearing it, because it needs to get in us. It's very mysterious, the Bible says. People live their whole life not realizing that we are actually a spirit being. We have a soul, and we live in these bodies Our bodies now, they are purchased. They're redeemed. They're purchased, praise God. But they're still decaying. And when you get over 50 or 60 years old, you recognize that. You might not think about it in your 20s. But sin works and tempts you in your body and in your unrenewed mind. That's where sin works. When you get born again, you don't get brand new thinking. You don't change out the mind and start all over. You're still dealing with everything you've ever dealt with. Feelings don't just all of a sudden get changed. You still get up sometimes in the morning and you're like, okay, come on, leg. There's still, I mean, you're... Something happens, though. There is a change. When you get born again, something just as real as anything that's ever happened in your whole life, just as real as your physical birth, takes place. How many of you remember the day you got saved? It's real. It's a real deal. Something happened that's real. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit 
and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. God will present you to himself through Jesus. God is the one that makes you holy. God is the one that makes you perfect. Well, nobody can be perfect. Yes, you can. Through Jesus, we can all walk in perfection. See, we are a triune being serving a triune God. You and I are three persons, body, soul, and spirit. we got to get this. When you're born again, it's your spirit that gets changed. Everything you'll ever need then gets on the inside of you and can affect your body and your mind, will, emotions, your feelings, and everything else that you're trying to think through. Colossians 1, verse 27, For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in in you. who That ought to give you warm fuzzies. Christ lives in you. The hope of glory. This gives you assurance. Sharing his glory. Not just privately, but wherever you are. See, Christ lives in us because we are born again. Your spirit has Christ in it, and your hope for all of life comes from the spirit of Jesus in your spirit. We're continually fighting living according to our new birth. Every one of us are. We're fighting it. Probably fighting it some this morning. When you're fighting depression, you're fighting horrible thoughts and feelings. I want you to know something today, and you can write this down. Your spirit is not depressed. When you're feeling everything's falling apart around you and there's no peace anywhere, you need to know that your spirit abides with the Prince of Peace. Your spirit's not dead. See, and if you can learn in all situations and circumstances to yield to the born-again spirit inside of you, you're yielding to Christ inside of you. Well, this is good. It will be then that things surrounding you start changing supernaturally because you accessed it from a supernatural side. It was birthed from something that was not physical. Why are we trying to access everything from a physical standpoint? It's because we think our physical birth has to change something. We think that our physical birth and what we were born into dictates our future. Well, my dad had this. My mom had this. This was just something I deal with. This is the way I am. You're only talking about physical things there. See, you're accessing, you're not yielding to the right thing. And we start saying these things and we find ourselves getting lost again. I'm not saying you're losing your salvation in your spirit, but you've sure lost it in your body and your mind. How in the world did I lose it there? Because you got saved, and when you're lost in any area of your being, you just need to get saved again. If I've ever been out in the woods and got lost, and I have been, but there was a day and time before you carried around a GPS in your pocket called a phone. You you didn't used to have that, and you couldn't find out wherever you are. And I, I have been in different places across country and out in the middle of the woods. I'm like, I'm lost. I don't know where to go. And I'm trying to look at the sides of trees that have moss on it because I know that that grows on the north side. And I'm trying to figure out, but I don't know if I'm southwest, east, or north of where I'm needing to go. So it don't matter which side the moss is on, I'm in trouble. And one of the greatest days of my life was I, I just was walking, didn't know where I was, and we came up on a road. I didn't know what road we were on, but somebody came by that road, and I said, where am I? And they said, you're right here. I said, oh, I'm just a hill over. I just got a hill over. Praise God. Somebody save me. You can't be lost and save yourself. There's got to be a savior. There's got to be something that came in and got you out of that lost state. The beginning of being saved is knowing that you're lost. If you don't know you're lost, you're going to end up in another mountain range. Still lost. The sad thing about life, come on, we all have relatives that don't even know they're lost. And we're going, come on, you're lost. You're, it's not, this is not working. You're lost. 
They need to get saved. They need to be found. But there's no options of getting where you want to go or getting help until you recognize that you need help. Today, I don't know what area of your life that you're feeling lost in, but I just want to tell you, there's hope. Today, the word of God is better than moss on the north side of a tree. It'll get you out of where you... Peter said in Acts 2.23, with the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. We are the reason we're lost. It's us. Then a few verses later in Acts 2.38, each of you have got to repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, while my relationship with the Lord is personal, I want to make sure you get this. That doesn't mean it's private. My relationship's personal, but it's not private. Church, hear me today. Baptism, baptism is not private. It's public. And a lot, of, a lot of times people get caught up and they say, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And they think that's part of the process of forgiveness. If you look up the word for, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for, the word for we mess up. Four means because of the forgiveness of your sins. Be baptized for the for, be baptized because you've been forgiven. Because you've been forgiven, you need to take something that you did and you made personal and not keep it private. Go get baptized. If you haven't been baptized, Water baptism is done as an act of obedience to show, share outwardly what you did inwardly. It's a public demonstration of personal relationship that you made with Jesus. My relationship is personal, but it's not private. Are you, are you getting that point? It's very important. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life and you've not been living publicly based on a decision that you made privately and you're keeping that decision private, maybe you ought to just go get baptized again. Pastor, are you telling me I need to get baptized again? Yeah, if you're not, if you're not living publicly what you did personally. See, we get this concept that at work and everywhere else, we got to keep our faith private. That is not the case. If you've made Jesus Lord and you've not been water baptized, your old man was crucified with Christ, and you're born again, you need to publicly get baptized. It's the first act of an inward fact. How did you like that? That was kind of cool. It is. It's the first thing you do outwardly of something that happened personally. But we get this idea of everything needs to stay private. The problem with Christianity is it stayed private too long. And my prayer in 2023, that's fixing to change. At the beginning of this year, we had to order new chairs. Can you just look on your own and see if there's any empty chairs? Okay, you and I have some work to do. How, well, what are you talking about? We need to take what happened to us personally and make it way more public. It's just not the staff's responsibility to increase. Acts chapter 2, they're added to daily because of the disciples. That's you and I. Now, transformed, Romans 10, verse 9, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you're made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Wow! You can't leave something that you did personally private and live out your salvation. One of our biggest problems is we're so familiar with church culture. We're so familiar with church culture. We, we just hear certain things and we unplug. I'm confident that's already happened today and I'm not seeing anybody sleep. Somebody's like, hit me if I go to sleep. All right. That's fine today. Don't be slapping them, just kind of nudge them. Or, uh, when we hear born again, a lot of people in church just shut that word out. 
Oh, here we go, born again, I am that, so I don't need to hear that. And we think we know because I've been living born again 25 years, but are you really understanding born again? Being in church will give you information. Being in church will give you inspiration, I I hope and pray. That's that's what we want to do here. But transformation and change happens on Monday. In your time, why do people go to church 40 years and get stuck on stupid? I have no idea. (laughs) Except for they don't understand that transformation is a daily activity for every one of us. I always want to be attentive to the word of God. Number two, offer your bodies a living sacrifice daily to the Lord. Romans 12, 1, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. You don't give yourself to God based on the thought that he's going to kill me if I don't. No, it's because all he has done for you that you give your heart and life to Jesus. Because all that he's done for us, he's done a lot. Living holy, sacrifice. I want you to know the word sacrifice here denotes death. This is a big deal. And when God revealed this to me, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because the word death in sacrifice, you offering your living body to him, and you're saying, I want to place my body on your altar, God, and I want it killed. Now, I'm not talking physically. You need to hear me. I'm talking spiritually. I am going to spiritually place myself in your hands, and I'm making myself a living and holy sacrifice. And it means you're offering something that you're going to have to continue to offer. That's why we say daily. 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 You've got to do, you've got to continue to put to death that daily flesh. It's a, this is continually put to death the flesh. So you've got a living sacrifice that you're every day, it's like you put it to death and it comes back to life again. You put it to death and then it comes back to life again. You put it to death and then it, man, I, I thought I got over that. I thought I got over that and it just keeps getting brought up in, into my, oh man, that pie looks so good in my, I just thought my taste buds had changed. Well, I do too. That's why I've got to daily put my body on the altar and let God change the way I'm operating and I'm acting. It's a living sacrifice. And you live transformed by living daily sacrifices. The, the resolve the, the resolution, the New Year's resolution only comes when you understand transformation. Your bodies have been purchased and bought. We still have hope. Uh, praise God, I'm going to get a new body. But can we kind of take care of the one we got? Can we watch that it's not out doing things it shouldn't be doing? See, sin can still work in your bodies even though the Spirit of God's living inside of your spirit. Sin's still working in body. How does that work? Sin doesn't work in your spirit. Jesus took care of that. But daily, you've got to place that body up on the altar. So it's not getting any traction. It will continue to operate in sin as long as you don't yield to the right thing and you've got to yield to the Spirit of God. Anybody get anything out of this today? I think it's important that we understand. Everyone here struggles with things even after salvation. Don't be surprised about that. Temptation, being drawn the wrong way, and you got a decision to make. Am I going to be a living sacrifice? Some of you got here this morning, and praise God, you yielded to your bodies who said, I want to keep sleeping. I just want to keep sleeping. Because you were up to see the new year end. Praise God, I saw it when the alarm went off this morning. But by sacrificing sleep, you stayed up and you yielded to your spirit to get to church this morning. Come on, I mean, all right, I sacrifice. Now, some of you today with kids not only yielded to your spirit, but it was a real living sacrifice to get up and get kids ready and yourself to get here today. 
It was, it was a challenge. And today you're pulling yourselves onto the altar and God wants us to repent if we have done something wrong with our flesh and you say, Lord, I'm struggling. And the second you say that, the second you say, God, I'm struggling, the Holy Spirit will deliver you. He'll start doing surgery on your body. He'll start taking what was meant for your destruction in the flesh and he'll let the spirit man all of a sudden become real and blah, and he won't allow that sacrifice to be made in vain. Praise God. That's the daily living sacrifice that we live in. There are times you got to put your life on the altar, the place where sacrifices are made. And the second you repent, God does something supernatural. And I'm telling you, this is a daily thing. This isn't, I did that last week. Well, you may need to do it again today. Not one of us in here are exempt from having to yield to the right spirit daily. Are you hearing that? At times, even though you're a born-again, spirit-filled believer, we say or do something that we knew better. Maybe to a co-worker, to a child, maybe a child to a parent, maybe to a spouse, and we did something. It's, sometimes you got to put that tongue on the altar. Ooh, I don't know. Your tongue's a part of your body, and you say something short, rude, meat, or stupid. You just, Pastor, you need to quit saying that. I teach my kids to. Well, the fact is, that's a word. And that was not wise at all. It wasn't ignorant. It was you knew better. That was not the thing you needed to do. And the minute you repent, what you're doing is, is you're climbing on the altar. Do a surgery on my tongue because I need it today. I know it's a sacrifice. The sacrifice is repenting and allowing the Holy Spirit to set you apart, to sanctify you, if you will, and get that tongue back in work for his good. Come on, every one of us is dealing with this. I deal with it every day. Not just trying to say something your flesh wants you to say. I'm not just trying to fight that battle. What I'm doing is I'm actually trusting in a God who can give me the right things to say. That only comes by you being born again and then living the sacrifice, a living sacrifice day in and day out. Number three, renewing of your mind. I'm there, I'm there. Number three, here we go. Renewing your mind. Romans 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Everybody say, changing the way you think. Changing the way you think. We've got to do that. We've got to allow God to transform us into a new person daily by changing how we're thinking on this. And then you'll know. Then you'll learn. Then you'll know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Church, when it says learn to know in the King James, it says to prove God's will, which just means to put into action. It means to put it into action. You're going to learn this as we're going along. You can't just renew your mind and leave it right here. You got to put what you just renewed into action. You got to go out and put to practice what you've put on the altar and allowed God to change. You'll never demonstrate God's perfect, pleasing, goodwill unless you do something with your bodies and your mind. You, you just won't. It all starts first with getting born again, the miracle of God creating in the human spirit, a renewing. Now we're at a different place. We're on a different path. But depending on how much we yield to the spirit and let our bodies yield to the spirit by being a living daily sacrifice, the second point, and then renewing our mind, the third point, we will then and then only be able to demonstrate what is good, pleasing, and perfect to God, his will in our life. Don't copy the behaviors. Don't copy them. Another translation says, don't conform to the world. Conform. This word means to shape like, to be molded into, and to act like. Come on, Christians got to quit acting like the world. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? I, I'm telling you, you'll know what it means when you start living according to God's plan because you're born again, because you're living a daily life, you're a living sacrifice, and you're living with a renewed mind. See, there's a little G God of this world, and his name is Satan. Now, he's trying to take Christians... And he's trying to pour them into a certain mold. 
Now hear me, I've just got a few more things to talk about here. This is important. They want Christians to compromise and look like them and sound like and act like them. That's what the world wants. Now we were once them, so I don't want to condemn them, but I'm no longer of them. I was born again, and I yield now to a different default. God doesn't want me conforming to the mold of the world. Now, I understand why there's some religions that won't even drive a vehicle. They take this verse so literally that you don't want to conform anything. Well, I don't want to be so separate that I don't, but I don't want to be so conformed that I don't look any different. So what does that mean? I want the Holy Spirit pouring me into the mold of Jesus. Now, let's, let's talk about this. You not only to harness your actions and your thoughts, you're to put them when they're wrong on the altar. I don't want to think like the world. I don't want to think the way God thinks. I don't want to think like, well, what do you want to think like? I don't want this and I don't want that. You're going to have to make a choice here. And that choice is finding a place where you want to be. That's a biblical process and a biblical worldview. And it's a process. We live in a time right now where the, the information that's available to us at our fingertips are there all the time. I mean, we can get everything we need just by going, hey, Siri, smartest person I've ever met. A lot of people think that. And a lot of times we turn to her. She can talk in any different accent you'd like her to. For those of you that didn't know, she'll even tell you if you start complimenting her that you need to keep everything a little more professional. I had someone tell me that this week. They were just complimenting, Siri, thank you for all the good that you do in my life. Well, thank you, but we need to keep things professional. I'm like, where did you come up with that statement? I don't know exactly how it was said, but that was what was told. I, there's just so much. The world's trying to get you to access answers by asking a phone and doing a Google search. Does, is that, that's not even weird. I mean, I, I look at your faces and you're like, well, yeah. Of course, because the world has started molding us into that being the place we go for answers. What do I need to do? I need some help with my kids, Siri. Tell me what I need to do. You better be careful what you're asking and where you're getting all your answers from. We, church, we need God. And we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we need to be living according to a different shaping, a different molding. Does life really begin at conception in, inside the mother? Or, and is, is the life that's there a fetus or is it an actual human being? Is the world going to end and we're the reason for it because we're destroying it? Because we keep doing this and we have cows and we have climate change and we have, and you on and on and on. Or is the world created by God, sustained by God, upheld by God, and being reserved by God for the day of judgment? Where are we at? We've got to get to a place where we understand you're going to have to fight this every day. Is evolution true? It's the beginning of the collapse of our society as a Judeo-Christian society. It's the, it's the start of all of this junk. Evolution offends people, and people believe that we evolved. Now, God created us. He created the world in six days, and it just seems that we have people trying to challenge that all of the time. We Christians have no idea how to keep from being transformed or changed by the world if you don't have something that's being fed into you different than what Siri's feeding. I'm not mad at Siri. We can't hold to a New Year's resolution because we recognize the difficulty it takes to keep from being transformed by the world. We just we don't understand. We have to change. We have to renew our minds. We can't look like the world, but we got to let God transform us. 
The word transform in the Greek, well, this is good. It means metamorpho. That's the word transform in the Greek. And it, the definition is a radical change of a being. A radical change of a being. Now let's go deeper with the Greek definition. It means a radical supernatural change of a being. Now for all of you scientists in here, or that enjoy science in school or any other thing, we've seen some of that. You ever watched a caterpillar turn into a butterfly? I never watched the whole process because I'd get bored. But I've seen one that was a caterpillar and then it's a butterfly. It's a radical change. I've watched tadpoles in my pond turn into some of the best eating you could ever have in your whole life. A bullfrog. Just, that's called metamorphosis. It comes from this word in the Greek that means a radical supernatural change. Isn't that kind of fun? When you think about that, you're like, wow, that's neat. A caterpillar is stuck in this low life position. I mean, it would be no fun, come on, to be a caterpillar as opposed to being a butterfly. And a caterpillar stuck in this low life position for so long, all the while inside of him is this beautiful butterfly. And all that he's got to do is go to through metamorpho. He's just got to transform. And it's a process, but when he gets through that process, life becomes way better to live. I want you to know today, if you'll implement, first, I believe we've got a bunch of born again, but daily, living sacrifice, being a living sacrifice, every day, renewing your minds, you can experience change and your life can live transformed. I'm, I'm not saying that that you're a warm, fuzzy worm right now. Or am I? Come on, you've got inside of you the Spirit of God because you're saved. What are you doing with your body and with your mind? Are you allowing a metamorphosis to take place and getting to the place where God's using you? And you only do that by allowing an altar experience where you live altered, where you live changed, you live different. 